Hey, look, it's like a, it's like a creature in a jar, man. Ooh. Anyway, so last week I uploaded my making of my Springtrap Crit Crit doll, and whilst I was making that doll, I actually made a Spring Bonnie doll too. That is not this doll. This was actually made. Well, technically that video was a few weeks ago. This was made, I believe, the week before last. This is like a fusion of the two. Ooh. I would show you the finished Spring Bonnie doll, uh, but unfortunately it, well, not really unfortunately, I made money, but it sold. So this will just do as a prefab for now. Obviously I have footage of the whole thing. So without further ado, let me show you how I made the Spring Bonnie doll. As with all my dolls, Spring Bonnie began as a 3D printed sculpt. After removing the supports and just cleaning up the print overall, I make a start on the painting process by priming the whole face black. If you've watched any of my other videos, I'm sure I sound like a broken record at this point, but I always prime with Molotow paints. From what I understand, these paints are commonly used with paint markers, however, they are so durable and just perfect for airbrushing. After a few layers of black is all nice and uniform, so then I begin applying the Xenophil Highlight to the model. This essentially consists of airbrushing white onto the model, in an attempt to mimic how light would be shining onto the face. This gives us a fantastic start to the shading, especially if we're using transparent inks to paint with, which we are, and also it just helps pick out all the little details of the face. Once dried, we can start airbrushing the base colour of the face, aka yellow. In order to retain the pre-established shading from the Xenophil highlight, I'm using acrylic ink, the the best part about these is just they are incredibly transparent but very pigmented so you can quickly build up a nice shade and keep the pre-established shading underneath. Looking back at the footage it's actually incredibly difficult to see what I'm doing here, probably because of how subtle a step it is, but I'm airbrushing a lighter tone of the yellow from above just to create some highlights. With the base colours all laid down we can start adding the details. Now usually I tend to pick the area which will have the darkest colour. Uh, this is mainly because I get a bunch of anxiety around these areas because it's a lot harder to clean these up if something goes wrong so I like to get them out of the way first so if there's any cleanup that's necessary, well at least it's happening early on. So that's why I paint the nose first and thankfully in this situation it all went pretty damn smoothly, no complaints here. Cute little button nose aside. We've got to now paint something a little less cute, at least according to the law, his teeth. Nothing too crazy here, I'm just painting multiple thin layers of acrylic white paint around those pearly, well, whites. Whilst we have a bunch of white paint out on our palettes, we can paint in the eyes. I still keep the paint application pretty thin, however, I don't have to worry as much about its overall finish as this will later be covered in liquid resin or alternatively nail gel. We're about to head to the pastel phase now so I'm just going to lock in all the paint using Pledge Clear Floor Polish Varnish through the airbrush. These coats will leave the face looking very shiny and we need it matte for the pastels so for this I just mix some matte Mod Podge into that varnish and apply that over. Once dried I sand down some chalk pastels onto some sandpaper to make a makeshift chalk palette. And then using some, well, makeup style brushes, mine are Artist Opus brushes, but any old makeup brush will do, I begin applying these pastels to the face. With a blend of a orangey brown and a black, I target any crevices or areas like around the eyes or the eyelids to add an extra level of dimension with super effective shading. I make sure to take my time with this step as going in too heavy early on can have serious adverse reactions and your shading will look more like just big stains on the model. Slow and steady definitely wins the race in this case. Just in case there are any gaps when we insert the eye chips later, I'm also just darkening the inside of the eye with some black pastel. After a final varnish with both gloss and then another coat of matte, it's time to make those aforementioned eye chips. To do this, I mock up some designs in Photoshop, print it out on photo paper. Then I dab some UV resin over the top of them and drop on a glass cabochon. Then using UV light, I can cure the two together and voila, eyeballs. 
Before we install our fresh eye chips, we need to gloss up those eyes. For this, I'm using UV Gloss Nail Polish. You could also use the same UV resin that we used in the last step. I just find that the gel tends to apply a lot smoother. After curing the gel with UV light, we can install the eye chips. I dab some super glue into the socket, and then, well, I just drop those oculars right in there. Please, please ignore the cap falling on the floor, please. Please. Embarrassments aside, the faceplate is done. Now, all that remains is to give this evil, menacing individual a body. If you've seen my spring trap making a video, you'll notice this is the exact same doll. Uh, it's the perfect base, considering it's a yellow rabbit, and also it's got poseable arms and legs, so that's fun. Thankfully, we don't need to coat the sucker in green like we did with Springtrap, since this is already yellow and the spring body is, well, unless I'm colorblind, yellow. As you can see here, I'm just slicing off some space to attach the faceplate, and also this gives us a point of entry. This is less important here because, again, it does have poseable arms and legs, meaning these are separate to the body, so we're going to have to perform small incisions into these to attach the claws. To better colour match the body to the faceplate, I'm using the same tone of yellow that I painted the face in, very watered down and applied through the airbrush all over the body. By ensuring that the paint is mostly water, it prevents the fur from clogging up and getting all stiff, it just remains soft as fur, and yet you manage to dye it without any crazy heat combo or anything like that. Now that the yellow is uniformly applied, we want to add some aged weathering to the fur. We of course don't want to go as heavy handed as we did with Springtrap, but a bit of weathering to the fur makes all the difference in the effectiveness of the paint scheme. Also, grunging stuff up is just kind of my thing, so I guess you're gonna have to deal with it. All my Crit Crit dolls feature claws, so to add claws to this particular doll, we're having to make small incisions just under the hand, and now we can make sure our claws are the right colour. Uh, the claws are 3D printed resin, and 3D printed resin can very handily be dyed using alcohol inks. These claws were 3D modelled in a similar vein to the faceplates, but I also modelled pegs for these claws that can be threaded through the holes in the back of the claw to enable the claw to stick onto the paw. To join the two together, I just spritz some super glue activator onto the pin, dab some super glue into the claw's hole, and then press the two together. And before you know it, he'll be perfectly capable of disemboweling any hapless security guards. Now we need to fuse up that small incision we made earlier. To do this, I'm just using a needle and thread. Spring Bonnie is more of a regal fella in comparison to his more trappy counterpart, and thusly he features a bow tie. So before I attach the faceplate, I'm just sewing a pre-assembled bow onto the body. We're in the late game now, all that remains is to fuse body and face. To anchor the faceplate to the body, I thread zip ties through small incisions I made in the plush body, and then thread zip ties through this hole, then through the holes in the faceplate, join them up, and then repeat the same process for the three other holes. This ensures a firm bond between the faceplate and the body, and also allows me to make sure I'm happy with how the faceplate is sitting on the body before I commit to any final glue steps. Once I'm happy with the positioning, I use some nippers to snip off the excess of the zip ties, and then we're ready for the last stage. I heat up my glue gun, and to mask the exposed part of the zip tie, I simply dab a bit of hot glue onto it, then push fur over it. I repeat this process with the remaining three zip ties, and then apply a similar technique around the perimeter of the faceplate to merge the fur with the face. I simply apply a line of hot glue around this perimeter, and then push the fur over it. Once this step is complete, well, you gotta finish Spring Bonnie. Let's take a look at the beauty shots. Crypt is leaving Torture. First I killed your brother, now I killed you. Symmetry, my friend! 
<laughs> Wake up, children! I have something for you to play with! This is gonna be so much fun! You, however, are finished! Farewell, my Gushma! I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that door, guys. Whilst that Spring Bonnie door has gone on to a new home, I still have plenty of a Crit Crit dolls as well as FNAF inspired dolls left in the store, this one included. If you'd like to check them out, you can hear the link in the bio. Please do drop me a like and maybe sub if you enjoyed the content. I have plenty more videos like this planned, but uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.